we are taking a look at some entitled parents or maybe they're not so entitled that's for us to decide today we have some situations we're gonna think are these parents entitled are they just being parents subscribe if you haven't already let's get straight into our first situation this one is titled my daughter likes your pin and button can she have them? So I'm guessing we're getting a bit of an entitled. Oh. I work as a door greeter at you know where. I don't know where. So I am used to compliments like, I like your pins. Where did you get them? Some of these pins are from vacations, conventions I attended, and online. I have this one lady, EM, who has a kid about seven or nine, EK. They always talk to me about one pin her child likes, which is actually a button. It's done by a friend of mine who also does MLP style art, so it looks kind of cute. EK, oh, that's what they're calling the child, always loves it and talks about it, and hence she wants it. I told her my friend's website to commission one for her own, but EM kind of shuts it down. Well, yesterday, EK and EM come in around 7pm and do their normal round of shopping. Usually normal banter, but EM suddenly just said, my daughter really likes your button and one of your pins. Can you just let her have them? I am shocked because I know which pin the kid wants. The pin is off Mofra from Japan and it's my favorite. I tell her no good for you and actually can find the pin on ebay and the button was a commissioned work made for me i actually spent money getting this made for me m just said i know you didn't waste your money on this stuff the pin is like five bucks and the button you got for free out of some kind of grabbage what's a grabbage oh grab back <laughs> I'm shocked and pull the pin up on my phone and it shows the price to be about $25. I tell her no and that she can buy these online and that I will not just give her these. She decides to tell my manager I stole the pin and button from her daughter. My manager, on the other hand, tells a woman that I have had these on my vest since I started in March. The manager also was on my side because EM is a downright Karen to nearly all in the store. She complains about nearly every service we provide. She still goes off about the pin and button that her daughter deserves them and I'm a grown woman who needs to grow up. My manager tells her to leave me alone and let me do my job. That's just crazy. Imagine the nerve of going into somewhere and just asking for someone's anything. Can I have a keychain? Can I have your phone? Can I have your earrings? You know? Here's what somebody said. My daughter really likes your button and one of your pins. Can you just let her have them? Sure, that's $50. What do you mean $50? Well, that's just how much it costs to replace them. You can have these right now and I'll order new ones. I'm not paying $50 for a kid's toy. So you're okay with costing me $50, but you're not okay spending your own $50 and you really don't see the problem with that. That is such a good point. People are saying the manager should have banned her. Yeah, ban that person from coming in the store ever again. That's awful. I don't necessarily think this is an entitled, oh no, I guess it is an entitled parent. I don't know why I said that. But good for them for standing their ground and being like, you know what? No one can just come up to me and ask for my stuff. My mum wants to keep my cats when I move. I have three cats, one I've had since middle school. I found her when I got off a bus and took her home. Obviously my mum paid for everything because I was like 12, 13. The second cat was a stray I bought in off the street in my high school. We were living with my grandmother. My mum and grandmother still were paying for everything as I didn't make much money while in high school. But I always took care of the cats as much as they did. The third cat I bought in during college and I paid for, why did she keep bringing cats into these people's home? And I paid for everything for her as I made more money. I started paying for more things for the others and paid for their vet bills as my mum never took them to the vet. My first cat ended up obese from being fed too much and it ended up with cancer. Oh, poor baby. I recently graduated college and got my big girl job and make significantly more money now and have been paying for almost everything, vet bills, even 4,000 eye surgery to remove one of the first one's cancer, expensive feeder to be able to put her on a diet, diet cat food, food for the other cats, toys, cat treat, cat trees, oh, water fountains, etc. I always wanted to be able to do this and always planned on doing this since I bought all of them home years ago. I'm waiting to move out from home soon. I live with my mum and planned on taking my cats with me. At first, she wanted to keep two of them and let me have one, but has now said I can take all of them but the second one that I bought in off the street since that one was very close to my grandmother who has since passed away. However, that one is almost bonded with me now and I feel horrible leaving one behind without having the others to play with. Am I in the wrong for wanting to take them all with me? If my mum can't pay for anything except the food litter, how is she going to care for them? She does care for them by refilling the second and first feeder, 
and cleaning the litter box. I would have no problem doing all of this on my own though. I just don't get to because she does it already. She stays home all day, doesn't have a job. I told her that she can see them anytime she wants, but she keeps saying, you're not taking them. I'm scared she's going to hide one of them so that I won't be able to. I plan on getting them all microchipped in two weeks. They should be microchipped already. That's me saying that. And my name is on all the vet bills. Does this make them legally mine? I don't know what to do here. Sorry for the rant. I just know they'd be so much happier with me in a bigger place. My mum and I don't have a greatest relationship. She's been in jail for theft and was addicted to Xanax, opioids, and would always be nodding out. She's been clean for a year from what I know, but she doesn't have a job and relies on disability checks from getting out of jail and not for having a physical mental disability, to pay for the rent and food stamps for food. I don't know where she gets a lot of her money to buy other things. I recently started paying the water bill. Any advice? I was just going to take them one day, but it's hard when she's always at home. I just hate this happening. Okay, so in, I at first I was like, you can't just bring family pets into the home and then take them all away from people. But in my mind, if somebody is able to take care of a family pet more than someone else, they should be able to take them and look after them appropriately. And it seems like the daughter cares more for the family pets than the mother does. Those are your cats, and it doesn't sound as if any of them would be properly cared for, exactly, if she had them without you there every day. Suggestion, arrange for them to be boarded at a pet kennel for three to five days before you move. Get them out of her reach ahead of time, and then leave on schedule. Pick them up, bring them home. It could save you a world of grief. Referring to getting them chipped and stuff like that, which I feel you should do when you get the pet as a baby. Yes, get them all chipped and registered, tagged with your town's animal control people. Create a, the paper trail that proves these are your cats. Move your stuff into your new home, then come back with two friends and three animal car carriers. If she gives you grief, tell her that if any of the cats is injured or taken, you will charge her with theft and animal abuse and she would end up back in jail and call the police. Okay, that's intense. Tell them that she has taken cats you can prove are yours and that you need a police escort to retrieve them. Show the responding officer your veterinary and city animal registration paperwork and get an escort to take your cat. That sounds kind of really in intense and quite damaging. The person, the original poster has an update. Thank you everyone for your advice. I wrote this all out right after another argument with my mum. I came back home after a few hours of running errands and she said I could take all of them. I was really surprised by this and started crying and we mended the whole situation. Also, I don't plan on just leaving my mum high and dry and never seeing her again. I'm not going to be very far from her. She's all, she also has a partner that stays with her a lot and a dog. Oh, nice. I hope everything stays this way and nothing changes. She is planning on moving into a different place as well out of the house we're in right now that we lived in with my grandmother. Whoever keeps the cats the cats will have to move home regardless. So change is inevitable there. If anything changes, I will probably look into a kennel boarding idea. Thank you all again. Ah, well, there you go. What was the point in us going through all that then? I don't think that's entitled. They just happen to be a parent. If, okay, so say I was a parent, right? And somebody bought dogs, because I love dogs, into my home and I grew up with, and not grew up, but I lived with them since my child was a child up into an adult. And then my child was like, okay, I'm taking my dogs now. I'll be like, oh, but they're my babies too. I, I want I want to live with them also. I've grown attached to these, these animals. I don't think that's entitlement. But then I do also think that, why does my eye look like it's sliding outside of my face? But then I do also think that it's, it's a, a good point. If you can't afford to look after their animal, you shouldn't be the main caregiver, have, should they have to split into homes. My mum keeps convincing me to have my baby on my dad's birthday. What? <laughs> Hello again. Oh, again. So my baby is due late November, three days before my dad's birthday. I have already found out it's a boy through DNA testing. While I didn't want to tell my parents' agenda, my husband told me to just tell them because we all know how dramatic they will be in the future if they find out by anyone else or other means. So I told them. Now my dad is still, still trying to convince me to name the baby after him. No, that's not happening. And then yesterday, my mum, for the second time, tried to convince me to give birth on my dad's birthday. As in, try to wait to go into labor until I am three days past due. Like this is something I would want to do or could control. She requested it in the family group chat. After I gave a resounding and rather harsh, not gonna happen, my parents have been radio silent since. 
are these people for real? Edit to add, it's my third baby and will be my second boy. My dad was disappointed that we didn't name my first son after him. This is insane. <laughs> This is insane. Let's start with a dad requesting you name a child after you. No. What if your name is ugly? You know what I mean? There's some names you just don't call babies anymore. But also, that is the most entitled thing ever. To request that somebody's child, who they have carried, made themselves, who they will be calling that name for their whole lives, you must name your child after me. Are you fucking joking? That is so entitled. Also, did anyone see that, the video I did that was, um, that's not how women work. The whole birth situation, just hold it in. Just hold the baby in. Your mother, who has given birth to you, is suggesting you hold in your child three days past the due date. Just hold it in, never mind everything else that goes on. Tuck it back up in there. That's not just entitled, that's crazy. That is absolutely insane. And by for looking at the comments, it seems like people have had a, a similar experience. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm looking at my dogs like they're like agreeing with me. How somebody who has given birth can suggest you hold in your, your baby for three days. Not just, oh, can you just wait till after midnight, which will still be a bit of an ask. Three days. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. I just, I just, you know what? I, just, I don't know where these people are. I just, Okay, let me know what you think about these stories below. Have you ever been told to hold in your baby? Let me know. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Bye.